God told Moses, tell the Israelites, if they obey my commandments, they'll be above everybody. The same way we see the so-called white men today, above everybody else on the earth, they're the richest, they're the most respected, so on and so forth. We would have been right there and higher if we obeyed God's commandments. But because we did not, we are brought down to a lower state. A lower state. We are forced into the ghettos, into the slums. We're getting shot down. We shoot each other down. We're at the lowest of the lowest. We have been called everything outside of our God-given nationality. Bring it out. But God calls us the real Jews according to the Bible. Look. Get Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Black man, Hispanic man, it should come to your mind, who am I according to the Bible? Why am I in the conditions that I am in today? Bring it out. Read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Huh? The ox knoweth his owner. God says the ox knows his owner. The ox is a very dumb animal, right? It says he knows who his owner is. He knows who owns him. He knows who he must answer to. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. And the ass, his master's crib. Another dumb animal knows where he belongs. You ask a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American man, where they belong, what do they say? They say Africa. Well, we're in Africa. Our homeland is actually Jerusalem, according to the Bible. Right. We are the original man, as so many of us say. Right. And since we're here with the blue bag, let me ask you a question. What's your nationality according to the Bible? What does God call it? Because in society, we've been taught that we're what? Niggas, African-American, Afro-American, right? What, what, what would you say your nationality is? Black and Indian? Give me Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. So a lot of us, we think that we're mixed, right? A lot of us think that we come from a lot of different places. What does the Bible have to say about mixed? Numbers chapter 1 verse 8. Uh -huh. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigrees. They, they declared their pedigrees, their bloodlines, after what? Read. After their families. Huh? By the house of their fathers. So your bloodline is actually determined by your father. Why? Because the father carries the seed. Well, get uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Read it. So what we, what we teach is that the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans are the real Jews according to the Bible. If he was, so, if he was a so-called American black, he would come from the tribe of Judah. That's, That's one right. of the royal uh, 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 tribes of the Bible. They descend from that royal priesthood, the, the nation of Israel. If he was Cherokee, he would be from the tribe of Gad, according to the Bible, which are both Israelites, which are both God's chosen people. So according to the Bible, you're chosen. You're above everybody else on earth. I know that sounds weird, but we're going to get there for you. What's that? Romans 8. Read. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16. Uh -huh. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. So it says the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. Meaning what? The Spirit is this Bible right here, the words of God. It says it bears witness with our spirit. Meaning what? If we identify with the curses of this Bible, God said that curses will come upon the nation of Israel if they do not obey God's commandments. We are the only nation of people that fit that. So if our spirit reads, that we are the children of God. So if this spirit, the words of God, lines up with our spirit, then we are the children of God. For example, Deuteronomy 28 and 16 says we be cursed in the city. What nation of people is cursed in the city? First fired, last hired, shot down, living in the slums and the ghettos. Who's that fit today? So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Therefore, that makes us the children of God, according to the Bible. Get uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 15, 28 and verse 15. 28 and 1, first. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God told Moses, tell the Israelites, if you listen to God's commandments, read. And to do all, I'm sorry, to observe. And to do all his commandments. And to do all his commandments. The problem with a lot of people, a lot of our people today, we like to cherry pick which commandments we want to do. For example, most of us don't have a problem with thou shalt not kill. Most of us. A lot of us still do that. But most of us in general, we don't have a problem with that. But God also says not to mar your beard. Right? God also says that a woman is supposed to dress in modesty. But a lot of our people, we like to cherry pick what scriptures we want to follow and which ones we don't want to. Therefore, we are brought to a lower state because of our rebellion. Read. Right. That's right. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Uh -huh. 
that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So one side of the coin, God told Moses, tell the Israelites, if they obey my commandments, they'll be above everybody. The same way we see the so-called white men today, above everybody else on the earth, they're the richest, they're the most respected, so on and so forth. We would have been right there and higher if we obeyed God's commandments. But because we did not, we are brought down to a lower state. A lower state. We are forced into the ghettos, into the slums. We're getting shot down. We shoot each other down. We're at the lowest of the lowest as far as our condition. Jump to verse 15. Verse 15. Huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, read, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So if we did not listen to God's commandments and do all his commandments, read, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So that's very important. God told the Israelites curses will come upon them and overtake them. So the way that we identify the children of God today are by, is by the curses in Deuteronomy 20, 28. So I'm going to read a curse and you tell me who it, uh, who it, who it lines up with. We're going to read a curse. And I, would, I want you to tell us what race of people this lines up with today. Whoever this curse lines up with, that is the children of God, the real Jews, by blood according to the Bible. Read Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord shall bring thee, the Israelites, into Egypt again with ships. Exodus 20 and 2. The Bible has its own dictionary within itself. What is Egypt synonymous for? We're about to read it. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Uh -huh. Now, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Now I'm about to replace Egypt with another word. Read. Out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous for bondage or slavery. Now, go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68. We're going to connect the dots. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt He again. shall bring thee into Egypt again. What's Egypt? Bondage or slavery. God told the Israelites they going to slavery again. How? Hold on, hold on. How do we get over here? Was it airplanes, bikes? She said, what? I'm sorry, I can't hear Okay. Okay. And they also went into they also went into slavery uh, going into Spain, Portuguese, so on and so forth, right? That that's that, that happened during the transatlantic slave trade. So you had the the uh the so-called African Americans, which are the real Jews today, taken from the west coast of Africa and put into North America, and you had some of the uh or a lot of the so-called Native Americans taken from North America and put over put into slavery in various other parts of the world, right? So they came over in the Portuguese, Spain, and other in various other parts of the world by ship, correct? When they went into slavery, right? Watch this, read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So when you think of a nation of people that went into slavery with ships, who do you think of? Is it the so-called white man, Chinese man? Black people, right? The blacks, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. When you look on the side, you can actually see us going into slavery, yokes of iron on our neck. You understand? So what does that mean? Since we line up with these curses, that means that we are the children of God according to the Bible. So why is it important that we understand that we are the children of God? Get Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Because right now, a lot of our people, we can shoot each other down without a care in our mind. Why? Because we don't see ourselves as Christ. We don't understand that we are royalty according to the Bible. We see, we see each other as other niggas, just nobody, roaming the streets, right? Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. And guess what? God says you're Israel. He says you're holy according to the according to him. He says you're holy unto God. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Holy. Chosen. These are specific words. Matter of fact, read on. What, is, what does this mean? Holy and chosen. Read. To be a special people unto himself. It says to be a special people unto himself. So if you go to your prophet, right? Everybody got that favorite outfit, right? If you go into your closet and you and, and you got a favorite outfit, what does that mean? That means that's your favorite. You like that one more than every other one. So guess what? Even though there's 18 nations on the earth, God chose us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It's important that our people know that because we don't see ourselves as important. We don't see the, the royalty in each other. Read. Above all people. Guess what? We are above everybody else. We should not be marching for equality that are upon the face of the earth. God says, and hey, let me ask you a question. Should we be marching for equality? No. no. Why is that? 
We all reach Fale already. We all king. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, a king, right? In a king, a king rules over what? Choose me. A king has a kingdom. Can everybody be kings in a kingdom? No. So if we're kings, are we equal to everybody else? Watch this. You read that again. Deuteronomy 7 6. What we are here doing, we're teaching our people, the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that they are the real Jews according to the Bible. Right. That they are above everybody else and that they should not be marching for equal rights. Right. Read. Verse 6. Listen to this. For thou art the holy people unto the Lord thy God. Huh? The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Hold on. Hey, bro. Hey, you heard that? Listen. Watch this. Read that last part. Above all people. It says above all people. We were never made to be equal. The other nations were made to be our servants. I know that's a hard thing to understand, but guess what? There has to be a king, and there has to be a kingdom. Everybody cannot be equal. God says we are above everybody else. How do we get above? Because right now, you look around, we're living in the lowest estates. You can just look around just, just this general area. You, you got brothers uh, uh, smoking crack. Everybody got to catch the bus. You can see brothers out here struggling. So why are we at the bottom? Why are we not at the top? Deuteronomy 28, 15 again. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Uh, no. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God tells Moses, tell the Israelites, the, the real Jews according to the Bible, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. If you don't listen to God's voice, what's going to happen? Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, to which do I, all his commandments, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what's your name? What's your name? S.C.? Okay, cool. So S.C., God said that curses will come upon the Israelites if they did not obey God's commandments. But hold on, we're supposed to be above. So in order for us to be above, we're brought low because what? We disobey God's commandments. So how do we get above? Exactly. So now, what, what should be your next step? What's the next question? If we're, if we're in a low state, we're supposed to be above, we were brought low because we didn't keep God's commandments. To be brought back high, we must keep God's commandments. What's the next question? What are God's commandments? So right now, we go, do you love God? First John 5, verse 3. You go to church? No? Have you been to church? Okay, what, what do they tell you is the love of God? What, what does the church tell you is the love of God? This is the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. Bring it up. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So if anybody tells you anything contrary to that, they'll say it. Because at, when we speak, what you're going to notice about the promise of God, everything we say is going to come out of this Bible. We don't make up our own, our own words. God says what? Read it again. For this is the love of God, huh? that we keep his commandments. So the love of God is us keeping his commandments. Not dancing, not singing, not shouting, none of that. It's keeping God's commandments. So the question is, what are God's commandments? We're going to give you one. You said you love God, right? So what would you do? If you love God, what would you do? If you love God, what would you do? No, no, no. What did it say? It said, for this is the love of God. You got to listen. Listen. Read. For this is the love of God uh, that we keep his commandments. The love of God is that we keep his commandments. We must do what he says. So if you love God, what are you going to do? You, you're going to do what he commands you, right? So watch this, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Are you, are you up for a test? You're up for a quick test. Take yeah, about yeah, one minute. Back, so we'll okay, okay. That's all it's going to say. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Read out. But I would have you know that the hand of every man is Christ, and the hand of the woman is the man, and the hand of Christ is God. So, God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order, right? Read. Every man praying oh, or prophesying. Oh, oh. Hold on, would you agree that we are prophesying right now? We're in the spirit of prophecy, right? You understand that? You agree with that, right? Read. Every man praying or prophesying. Every man praying or prophesying. Who's your head? Christ. Read. Having his head covered. Having his head covered. Meaning like a hat. You understand that, right? So, every man praying or prophesying. You understand that as a hat. Read. 
dishonoring his head. For every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. Meaning what? If you're praying or prophesying, meaning you're either prophesying or listening to the scriptures, having your head covered, you dishonor your head. That's why when you come into church, you have, when people do what? They take off their hat. So if you love God, what would you do? Take off your head. Okay. All praises, all praises. That's repentance according to the Bible. That shows that you love God. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. What is God doing? God is establishing order right now. The problem with a lot of our people is that we don't like order. We don't, uh, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, we love chaos. We do not like law and order. That is part of the reason why so many of us is locked up today. For example, give me Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Hey, sis, let me ask you a question. Why are so, why are so many of our, uh, of, our, of our young men in prison? Breaking the law, right? So, with that being said, does God command us to obey the laws of the land? In a way? Watch it, watch it, read it. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 1. What we're doing, what we're doing is we're giving solutions for the black, Hispanic, and Native American community. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. God says, let every soul be subject to the higher power. Meaning what? The law says there's no smoking weed. We should not do meth, cocaine, so on and so forth. So what should our people do? We should not do these things. This is something that you can take back to, to your, uh, your grandchildren and, your, and your, your grandson and granddaughter. These are solutions to bring us back out of the lowest state and broken mind of our people. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid, that is not the truth. So if a man spit game to a woman that is not promised or married, read, and lay with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So guess what? In our community, when we lie down with one another, we're supposed to marry them. That's why we have so many single parent households. That's why a lot of our brothers and sisters grow up and end up in jail because they, they're more likely to end up in gangs do drugs, so on and so forth, because there's no father figure in the house. But what? If we apply this one commandment, all these things will be reduced drastically. Read, read it again. Verse 16. If a man entice a maid that is not the draw and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So if a man or a woman lies with someone, or if a man lies with a woman, they are supposed to marry them. Now, sis, in the uh, Exodus chapter, I mean, 20, Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. This is a law for the women, right? <laughs> this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Remember, as a people, we are brought to a low estate because we disobey God's law. To get out of this low estate, we must keep God's law. Read. This, law, this is one law for the woman. You women, listen up. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. God says the woman is not supposed to wear that which pertains unto a man. So what do, so a man, right, what should he not put on? A man should not put on a dress. What should he put on? Pants. Well, if a man should not put on a dress, he should put on pants. What should a woman not put on? Pants. And, a, and, a, and she should put on? Exactly. A woman should be wearing a dress. God says a woman is not supposed to be wearing that which pertains unto a man. Women are not to be wearing pants. They're made for the men. Why? Because then it brings a masculine spirit. Wait, so you got so many of our women bucking up to the man, being so loud about that, da 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 You can't tell me that da 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 So with that being said, repentance would be what? Finding modest dresses to put on, correct? So what, what do you plan on doing now? That's repentance, according to the Bible. Well, I can't lie. I ain't going to lie if you ain't going to wear my pants no more. Okay, this is Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. Because God says, I mean, man. Even a single woman ain't allowed to dress like that either. You say what? I said, even a single woman ain't allowed to dress like that either. Did it? Even a single woman? Did it? Did it say married, single, widow, or did it say women? It said women, right? 
Every, everybody, every one. Get out. All right. Just nine, one verse eight. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter one, verse eight. Because a lot, of, a lot of our people, we think that we can pick and choose what we want to see. If it's small, I don't really got to do it. I don't really got to shave my beard. I don't really got to wear fringes. But it's God say about our entire reef. And this shall come to pass. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. When something is being sacrificed, what does that mean? Blood is being shed, right? That I will punish the princes and the king's children. It says, I will punish the princes, that's the men, and the king's children. That's the women. That's what I read. And all such as, such as are clothed with strange apparel. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So guess what? If Christ comes back and he finds men in dresses or women in pants, there will be death. All right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.